Hi, and welcome to another episode of our Better Business, Better Life. Today, welcoming Darshan Chavan to, uh, to our session. And Darshan's got a really interesting story, and I'll get him to share more of that. But um, love to hear, he came to Australia 10 years ago to study and took on a part-time job of door-to-door sales and discovered that he absolutely loved it, um, which is, I think, for a lot of us, it's our worst nightmare. Um, put it up there with, you know, public speaking for some people, but really interested to hear more about that, um, Darshan. So, but the first thing I'll actually get you to do is, well, let's dive straight into our first questions that we always ask people. What is a best personal? and then a best professional win for you in the last you know three to six months yeah i think so that the best uh, personal win for me is uh, my ability to maintain that energy and uh, like you know the health in the business all right because for me uh, I, I don't i don't remember the last time i took a, a like a sick leave or a sick vacation even though we run our own businesses so i'm pretty happy that i'm able to uh, maintain that energy that health and keep it sustained for a really long time um, so that, that, that I think so that would be a really good, uh, important win when it comes to the personal side. And in the professional side, uh, for me, it's just the impact that we are making with the number of team members. We are able to help them provide the livelihood because we have added at least another uh, 45 team members in the last one year. Wow. And for me, how I look at it is like, especially when people uh, work remote, all right, from Philippines and other countries, um, we are able to have a really big impact. And uh, we can see that it's not just not benefiting them, but also their families and also their uh, closest inner circle, which I think so uh, is really amazing for us. Fantastic. That's huge growth in a, in a year. So I'd love to hear more about how you've, uh, how you've managed to um, sustain that growth and do it so that, uh, you know, I've seen so many businesses grow really quickly and then the systems and everything break in the process, but we'll get to that. So, Tell me a bit about you. Tell me your story and how we got to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, to even begin with, way before when I moved to Australia, I was a pretty shy kid when I started my journey uh, way back in school days. And yeah, I used to not study. My parents used to get complaints from the school, the teachers every uh, other day. All right. And I used to have very low grades, even in my university as well. Uh, where I couldn't even qualify to apply for jobs. All right. Because I, my, my grades were so low. And uh, yeah, somehow, like, you know, uh, just by accident, all right, I was able to discover personal development. And I I still remember pretty clearly because I was into a lot of troubleshooting, like laptops and computers. Uh, When I finished my college, like my year 12 and others, I used to troubleshoot a lot of softwares, like, you know, install Windows, all right, um, clear the hardware and everything. So I was trying to download a few things online. And I came across a particular topic, like 10 keys to uh, success or something like that from Brian Tracy. I'm like, wow, okay, this sounds interesting. Let me just watch it. I don't know what it, what, what it, what it would be. And then that started the rabbit hole of personal development. And I'm like, wow, there's a particular science to it as well. That, you know, you need to have your goals. You need to take responsibility. You need to take action. And that's when you can change um, the trajectory of your life. So, yeah, I just went on that path and that's when I got to know that, okay, you know what, let me take another challenge of moving to a different country altogether. All right. And uh, then, um, yeah, I just applied to come and study here in um, Australia and I decided, okay, you know what, everyone talks about Melbourne because usually I I didn't even know about Brisbane or Gold Coast at that time when I was in India. So I thought, okay, you know what, let me go to Melbourne. Uh, it, it, It sounds very amazing. And I started my journey as an international student. But even from the day one, when I started my studies in Monash University, I was not interested in uni, no studies, anything. But I always knew uh, that if you want to succeed in business, I could see that repetitively all the business books talked about, you got to be exceptional in sales and you got to be really good in marketing. If you can get these two right, you would be able to have pretty good business success. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me get started with sales. And because I did not have any sales experience, zero, all right, I worked in IT before that. Um, the only sales job I could get was knocking on people's door and um, selling Telstra door to door. And the first time when I started in Melbourne, there was a massive heat wave going on. It was like at the month of Jan 2014, all right, and yeah, it, was, it was pretty <laughs> intense, all right. Yeah, and I didn't know that it was so hot until the iPad that we used to work with uh, showed a red thermometer saying that the iPad can't work. Too hot. Yeah, and the iPad shut down. (laughs) That's the first time I saw a red thermometer on an iPad. 
I'm like, cool, that's all right. And we just took a notebook and we used to still smash um, the doors and still keep knocking. And that was an amazing journey. I did that for uh, two years until I was able to pay off my entire student debt or a student loan. Wow. Because what happens in India is you don't get hex. Either uh, you make the payment, you don't make the payment, you got to mortgage your parents' house. Mm -hmm. So that was another driving force for me to get really good in uh, sales as well. But the best part was when my parents came here for my graduation ceremony, I was able to give them like, you know, the entire cash, which was supposed wow. to clear my uh, student debt off and they were able to get their um, home back. And then, yeah, I continued my uh, journey. All right. Um, in, in sales, but I just moved on to business to business sales. And then, uh, yeah, I was very keen to get into learning and development. I always wanted to do a Tony Robbins seminar, all right? And I got to know that he's coming to Sydney in 2015 to do the firework. And yeah, uh, that's where I got to meet my business partner as well. And we started a couple of uh, businesses. And even before as well, there were a few businesses that didn't go well way back in 2016. We had a few businesses that uh, didn't go well, but it all, it's always a learning lesson. We learned from there. We moved on and um, yeah, the last two years have been pretty massive growth in the way that we are able to uh, share the message of building high performance remote teams. So what are you actually doing now? What's your current business and what, what, what do you do? What's your yeah, but what outcome, we do is we usually work with uh, business owners, all right, so that they uh, get to outsource, they get to delegate and build a really high performance remote team. Okay, so that they can make a bigger profit margin and also take a time off. And how we okay. do that is we help them find amazing quality talent um, outside of Australia, be it Philippines or India, so that they can delegate, they can outsource and they can really focus on uh, working on the business. Because sometimes we, we just get so caught up doing admin related work, um, you know, it, it really doesn't drive the business. So, yeah, and, and the best part is like, you know, the, the labor is pretty um, affordable as well over there and people have way much more hunger, they're driven. Um, yeah, so usually business owners are both here in US as well as in Australia. We can we have clients both in US as well in Australia. Okay. Um, they, they see a pretty good ROI. And one of our client, Josh, I think so in the last six months, he was able to save almost $85,000. Wow. When we okay. did the calculation and we were like, wow, Josh, that's a big money, man. And, and the best part is right now he just works only four days a week. He just oh, takes uh, three days off. Uh, I don't think so. In the last three months, he has worked on any Friday as such. Yeah, I was talk uh, heard somebody say a, a while back that um, they have now what what's become known in their family as Farm Friday. The, the family owns a farm. So he's decided that he's going to work Monday to Thursday. And on okay. a Friday, he goes to the farm. And then the, his wife and children come in on a weekend. And then they can have fun time rather than the kids having to work on the farm so they didn't want to go mm -hmm. because they always you know had jobs to do so so he now goes and does farm friday um, and that's bo blocked out in his calendar which i really love that concept so so, so cool. th uh your business so it, um the staff that you're providing are they um like bookkeeping are they admin what are they actually do, um what services are you providing yeah usually like uh bookkeeping virtual assistance admin support uh, customer support social media as well mm -hmm. um where business owners can really delegate those tasks or even if they have uh, some of their management team here in australia they can have a support staff as well it's not that you need to move your entire team overseas or uh, make them remote it's to supplement your current team members if they're already under a lot of pressure all right they're getting stressed they can always find an ea as well Nice. Awesome. Now, when we were chatting before we started recording, we, um, you mentioned some awards that you've, um, that you've won. And I'll, I'll start with what I was talking about was, um, you know, I used to own an IT services business and we'd always kind of hidden. We uh, had a very niche market around regional hospitals and regional councils and we didn't really, and professional services, we didn't really want sort of, you know, um, mums and dads or really, you know, micro business bringing their equipment to us. So we'd always hidden. Um, no signs on the building. Nobody really knew that we even existed. And then working with a sales coach, we set a theme for the year of be seen, be heard, and from that uh, came invitations to speak at conferences. Um, Nick, my husband, was invited to go to the Philippines and speak to some business owners about how to transition from, you know, into a, a managed service provider, those sort of things. Ended up up on stage in uh, the US in front of three and a half thousand people at a conference to accept an award. So for us, those awards just, um, you know, it came from setting that theme and changing our mindset of how we were 
looking at ourselves and our business and um, going out into the marketplace, I guess. But you mentioned a couple of awards that you've won. How did you, what were they? And how did you, how have you leveraged off those to build your business and build the business's profile and maybe your personal profile? Yeah, sure. I'll tell you a quick story as to how I got started with uh, the first business award that we won, uh, which is uh, the AFR Fast 100. Um, it was almost like, you know, uh, four years ago when um, I was having a chat with my mentor. All right. He currently owns one of the biggest training companies in Melbourne. And I got to meet him through um, Tony Robbins Inner Circle. All right. So there were a lot of people over there and we were having a chat. And I just approached him saying that, would you be able to have a quick chat uh, with me? Would you be able to mentor me and everything? And uh, in uh, 2019, I guess, like, you know, I, I still remember very clearly, so vividly. It was in Melbourne CBD. We were just taking a tram from Swanson Street and we were going to the Lind Cafe. All right. Mm -hmm. And I was just having a chat with him and I asked him, like, how's business going on? What's happening? And he mentioned to me, you know what, um, Dashan, we just got recognized as one of the 100 fastest growing companies uh, through BRW because that's what uh, AFR was called at that time. Mm -hmm. And I just feel amazing um, that uh, we got recognized as one of the 100 fastest growing companies. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. And just as soon as I came back home, I just took a picture of it and put it in my vision board saying, that, you know what, um, some like very soon I should be able to hit this goal as well. And I, I still remember it. It's still in my vision board that I should be able to make it happen. And in 2022 is when we got recognized as one of the 100 fastest growing businesses. And um, that's when we really uh, like, you know, got to know that even though our team is 100 percent remote, we can build businesses. All right, uh, really scalable businesses. And that's where we started to share our journey with many more business owners because many people had a lot of limiting belief mm -hmm. saying that, okay, if people are overseas, like, you know, I won't be able to communicate. I won't be able to have my huddles. There won't be any personal touch. Okay. And also many, many other limiting beliefs as well, right? You know, well, what if they take my data and go away? All right, which, which sometimes is true, but there are so many ways that you can, uh, like, you know, work around it and make sure your data is still uh, private and secure. And uh, people still started asking us, like, you know, you, you still don't, I, I can't still see you working on Saturdays or Sundays. You still take a lot of time off. All right, you take some holidays. How, how are you guys able to do this? Whereas we are struggling so much to scale a business and what exactly is happening? That's when we were able to share the journey saying that one of the biggest challenges why businesses don't scale is because of a cash crunch, because of the cash flow. Whereas when you're able to save almost 40 to 45% minimum uh, in, your, um, in your staff wages, you have so much money to spend on ads, marketing, hiring better people as well, because currently we, we even spend almost 50 to 55 grand a month just on ad spend. The reason why we were able to afford that is because we were able to save a lot on uh, like, you know, staff wages. So yeah, that, in that way, we are able to share our journey with uh, a lot more entrepreneurs, business owners, and it gives them the belief as well. Like, you know, we are walking the talk. We are just not saying that, okay, just go ahead and build remote teams. Uh, we've been able to show that uh, we can do it. it. It does come with its own inherent challenges, but we are able to work our way around it and also figure out a system as to how to keep uh, the remote staff motivated. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a win-win situation. So what's a challenge that people um come to you with that either they're um maybe they're having with um a current um provider or um that you know not so much about you know a business challenge but um you know somebody who's tried another bpo for example um and look, talking to you um because we've been down this journey a number of times ourselves and um some success, some failures. Um, but yeah, what what do you hear in the industry around people saying, you know, I've tried it, hasn't worked, and what do you dif do differently? Yeah, for us, there are two two things over there, all right? The, the first and foremost is just um, handling our own entrepreneurial mindset, okay? Because if, if we are not used to empowering people, all right, like always micromanaging them, all right, trying to try to get every single dollar worth out of uh, the people, all right, or maybe even trying to get $10 worth of value from it. Uh, it just comes across as a different uh, way. And then people would not like to work, be it anywhere, be it any, anywhere in the world. They would like to work with people who are empowered, who are leading them in the right way. 
So th that's the biggest challenge that we come across sometimes with business owners because it's just not the service provider or the particular virtual assistant that you work with. So it just comes down to educating um, the business owners sometimes, all right, and letting them know and communicating them. It, it's always going to be a two-way street, all right, and having the clarity in communication to the team member that you're working with, all right. And second thing is sometimes what we believe is it just comes down to the hiring the right person or the right candidate for the right role. As uh, what Jim Collin uh, talks about, right people in the right uh, role, and what we see is there's always a mismatch. So what we specialize is uh, we specialize in doing a lot of personality profiling, be it disc profiling, all right, uh, personality plus. There's there's a lot of personality profiling that we go deep and harder into it, so that we get the right person for the right role. This is where the match happens, and that's where people like. Um, some of the team members that uh, we help them hire. And the second thing is, most of the time, it's the right person who's leading them and also who's working as an account manager between the business and the right candidate. So what we hear most often is, uh, everyone is amazing Why before you get the business or even maybe in the first month. Right after that, sometimes an account manager gets 200 staff or maybe they might have 40, 50 clients. So whereas with us, what we do is we make sure an account manager doesn't have uh, too many clients because we know that that's one of the biggest pain points in the market. And that's also one of the biggest frustrations where uh, clients face that you're just another number. So whereas with us, we just take more of a personalized approach and we also make sure we are the ones who are being more proactive in interacting with the business owners. All right. How is your team member going? All right. Are they clear on their expectations? Because what we've seen is most of the time uh, the breakdown happens or people and the business owners aren't satisfied when their expectations are not communicated in the right way. Okay. So that's where the account manager comes in and she uh, liaises between those two and makes sure the connection is pretty good and yeah, the business owners are really um, getting their bank for their buck. And it's no different to any other business really isn't it it's that that account manager can make or break a, a, a relationship or, or a deal or a project are your team uh, all working remote working from home or are they in bpos in in the two different so it's India and the philippines at the moment, from home. because what we could see that was uh, really high quality and high talented people these days they love the flexibility of working from home all right uh, but, but having said that we have systems in place to make sure that uh, like, you know, the data is protected and also we have different ways, all right, where we make sure that they are still working on the business and people are able to get their returns, what they need. Nice. And it's interesting. I um, So we're both members of EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. I was learning chair of EO Melbourne through COVID. Um, mm -hmm. So organizing events and spent hours on Zoom doing, um, you know, learning events and things. And one of them was a... Um, I guess a panel on uh, offshoring versus onshoring and, you know, what's working, what not working. And one of the things that I really learned from that myself, and I was the host of the panel, was not looking at it as offshoring or external resources, everything. These guys are just part of the team. True. And, and where they are really doesn't matter because, you know, through COVID, um, particularly Based in Melbourne, we're in, in lockdown, um, you know, as many other places around the world were. And really that shift from just getting the right people into the right role, regardless of where they are. Big time. Yeah, because it, it doesn't matter if they're in Australia or US or Africa or Philippines. It just comes down to the culture of your um, company. And that, that's something that we really work hard on uh, to making sure that the culture is set up right. And that's where most of our effort, time, everything goes into making sure the culture in the company is set up in the right way so that it has a ripple effect. So how do you manage your internal culture? If you have so many people working all from home in different countries, you've got, you know, what, what does the structure, the leadership team structure look like? Yeah, you uh, I'll just share with you one, one thing that we do, uh, which we are having today evening as well. Uh, what we do is at the beginning of the month, we have a thing called as a town hall meeting, all right, where every month we have the entire uh, company come across and have in a Zoom call, all right, where we share the wins that the company has had, where we are going, what are our future plans, 
And we also have a few of the virtual assistants come and share their journey since they started working with us and uh, what kind of an impact. So that's the leadership team sitting in that and, and the account managers and then you'd bring in some of your VA. So it's, that's not an all not in all team, in team experience. experience. Everyone knows because that's why we do it after. Oh, wow. Uh, so how many hours, staff do you like have? 30 in the evening and everyone just jumps on um, okay. Zoom. And um, yeah, there's just a few people speaking and sharing their journey because every month we select a, a, a few nice. people who have had amazing successes. And we do a lot of recognition as well during those times. All right, there's a lot of uh, fun games as well. We play over there like trivia questions. And um, yeah, that's how we make sure that there's a part of a, a culture. And at the same time, the leadership team also knows that this is where the focus is going for the company. Nice. Yeah, I love that that inclusive. Um, we we did a lot of that through. We were pretty good at it before. We'd had a remote wow. team for twenty years, um, so we were pretty good at doing it. But COVID just made us to you know take it to a whole new level. Um, and you know having that you know once a month staff meeting. You know the biggest we got was thirty six staff I think uh, before we sold. And uh, you know it was starting to get a little bit harder to manage that amount of people, but. Um, including everybody so everybody knew that they were you know part of that bigger picture and and um and and it also came to that be seen be heard making sure that our staff felt that they were seen mm. and heard which sounds like you have the the same approach um so leadership team so you have a business partner what else who else sits in that leadership yeah team? What we does do have an operations like? manager we have an account manager we have a recruitment manager so yeah and, 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 a, and a sales lead as well so these are the few people that we have over there and all of them have their own uh, KPIs, their things are uh, clarified. And usually on every Wednesday, we even have a leadership meeting where we go through in detail, like, you know, a few of the skills that we can improve as leaders and less about the numbers because numbers is where what we discuss during the one-on-one -on -one session and uh, more about the skills, like, you know, what kind of leadership skills that we need to build on? How do we develop that culture? Okay. How do we uh, be better at having open communication with people? How do we build people up? How do we motivate them? How do we influence people? And yeah, a few other topics like those so that they can really grow as a leader and uh, they would be able to have an uh, empowering impact on the people that they lead. Fantastic. Now you mentioned earlier about um, you met your business partner at a Tony Robbins event. Um, what other things have you done around that personal development? Because it sounds to me like that's been a big part of your, your life and your personal Yeah, life. I think so. Like, yeah, personal development has been a really, really major part of my life. Um, so I think so I've done all of Tony Robbins seminars, be it Date with Destiny, uh, all right, his business mastery. And even last uh, three months ago, like in September, I had my parents visiting me over here. Even I took them to the Tony Robbins seminar as well and make them walk on fire. So it was a really cool experience to do that. <laughs> yeah, they, they were pretty happy with it. Like, you know, they were a bit anxious in the beginning. I'm like, how can you walk on fire? I'm like, you just go and be in a state and make your move and go for it. All right. And, and they were pretty pumped to do it. So that, that's with Tony Robbins. And I've done a few seminars of John D. Martini. So he has had a pretty good impact. But when it comes to leadership and uh, personal development, um, there's another person, Darren Hardy, who has written a book called as Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. So, um, yeah, he has a few programs as well, like Hero's Journey, uh, like, you know, and many others, which uh, really prompted me to improve my leadership skills. And on top of that, uh, we get mentored by uh, an amazing leadership uh, mentor as well. His name is Peter Cox. So he's even a board member for uh, our group of companies where we spend almost four hours every month sitting one on one, um, uh, talking about where we are heading, how do we really keep the leadership team uh, motivated, accountable, what they do, all right, and how do we uh, align them towards a common vision. So yeah, the, the, these four hours with him every single month from last three years has had a massive. So who's in that meeting? Is that you and your business yeah, both, partner or is it the whole uh, leadership team? Just me team? and my business partner. And once every three months, he has an individual okay. chat with a few of the people in our leadership team as well, where whom we see that they're going to grow, they're going to get better. So that's why I think so personal development has been so much important part of uh, my life. And what we do as a team as well is every Monday, I get to share a very inspirational, motivational video with the entire company. And in their own individual team huddles, we come across and discuss one takeaway and one action step 
that we can do uh, after watching that video. So yeah, personal development has been a massive impact. Massive. What do you think, uh, or do you think any cultural differences play into um, that personal development space? I, you know, um, I do now coaching and, and EOS implementing and various other programs that I run with um, businesses that have, you know, um, lots of, you know, diversity uh, in Australia in their staff, but also offshore teams. And I'm often asked about, you know, how the sort of programs and training that we run um how it's received uh, with pe people in the Philippines, for example, or, or India or Sri Lanka, um, South Africa is another country that we um, we have, you know, um, team members in. So do you see any differences from culturally? Yeah. Uh, I think so. The only the difference I can see a little bit is people maybe from Philippines and India and other things tend to invest more in uh, maybe business coaching or something that that's more tangible rather than just life coaching or uh, trauma coaching or uh, like, you know, other kind of stuff. That, that's something which I've, I've seen myself over here because over here in, in Australia or US, I can see people might indulge a little bit in uh, NLP, which is still like, you know, amazing, which has its own benefits. But when I see uh, people in other countries, they, they, they are more towards more tangible results. Like it can be sales coaching, it can be marketing okay. coaching or business coaching. So people are so much more driven and keep going towards it. Um, whereas I think so in Australia, we, we do um, go into a lot of other coachings as well, like an LP and other stuff. So it's a more tangible, give me yeah, a yeah. skill rather than um, things that are perhaps a little mm -hmm. bit harder to, to understand yes. or to grasp. No. Now, you <laughs> touched on earlier about um, you do some disc profiling. So who do you do that with? If, if I came to you and said, I need a VA, um, do you profile me so that you you know that who I am and can match the yeah. best person? Yeah, so it usually begins with a virtual assistant first, okay? Uh, because we, we have a pool of people who keep applying, all right? Because uh, I think so we have some amazing ratings as well on Glassdoor. Uh, like, you know, we have almost like 28 five-star reviews on Glassdoor where people uh, come and say that they have they love working with us. And also what we have done is we have built an entire landing page only to hire top-level talent. So a lot of people uh, know that they can have amazing benefits working for us. So we get a huge number of uh, high-quality talent applying for us. So we usually try to profile them. Okay, that's how it begins with. And depending on the role. So let's take an example. If it's going to be a customer support role, we try to look for, uh, just taking DISC as an example, we try to look for a person who's more I. When I say I, like someone who's more bubbly, mm -hmm. who's a people person, all right? And uh, people love speaking to them on the phone, okay? So whereas if you're looking for a bookkeeper, you would look more for a C type of personality. You don't want an I <laughs> like me. Yeah, if you look more for an I personality, it's going to be a disaster. And that has happened through our own experience. Yeah. All right, because you've got to be detail oriented. You've got to be analytical. You've got to be process be oriented. C. But most of the times, they, they, this doesn't happen. All right, because you just look at the experience and someone, they might have worked as a bookkeeper, but they are extremely high I personality. But still five years they've been working as a bookkeeper and might not have done that of a best job. Whereas when you look for a bookkeeper and if they are a high C personality, there's going to be an amazing match. So that's the first part of doing it. And the second part is as soon as we help the team member on board, we start working with them. We also profile the business owner so that the staff member understands if they're going to be an extremely high D, uh, they don't care about anything. They just care about the results. All right. And even though they, they may come across as a little bit more bottom line, they, they, they mean good, all right? Because that's the personality that they have. They're re they really high D. That doesn't mean to say that, like, you know, they're a bad person. They're just worried about results. They're worried about taking action and moving forward. Think. So that's something that we try to communicate it uh, with them as well. So that there's a kind of a match yep. in the personalities. And then other, everyone knows who they're working with. Yeah, it's interesting. We, um, I'm, I'm a disc profiler, so I've, I've um, a lot of knowledge and, um, and used to use this a lot in our business as well. And, um, and when we started using it in the business, you know, we, um, we actually 
discovered that we had hired a lot of I personalities. Um, I think all of our sales team were DI, ID, which kind of makes sense. Um, and our sales coordinator was an SC. So, well, that makes sense as well. Um, but we really started using that tool to bring some balance even into the technical team because, um, you know, even though they were techs, they're still mm. customer service. And, you know, a big part of what we did for our customers was actually being able to take our customers through the journey that, um, yes, we've got your problem. Yes, we're working on it. We care about you. Um, and, you know, trying to bring that balance of, um, you know, across, you know, IC, um, CI uh, into the team as well. So, um and it just changed the way that our, our t whole team worked together, but also that understanding. And you said this about, you know, you bring a VA in to work with your client and, and they know who they're dealing with. That's a critical part, part of it as well. Yeah. Um, and and I'm doing a lot of, I'm actually doing a, a webinar on for EO uh, next week for the uh, Asia Pacific region on exactly this. Um, so I love these profiling tools and the yeah. behavior tools because um, I think they're very underutilized in uh, in running oh. our business and, and, and bringing that, I, I love the word balance. Um, and often when you, you know, start working with a client and you look at it and pretty much everybody's the same. It's like, mm, I can see the, uh, I can see why we've got a bit of a cultural problem here. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it does help uh, us a lot. Yeah, in many ways. Yeah. Now, there was another award that you didn't talk about f before. There was the, uh, you talked about the um, Fast yep. 100, but there was another Yeah, that, that's something too. which I just got to know a month ago, uh, 40 under 40. All right, from Business Elite Awards. Yeah, I mean, I just feel pretty privileged as well, starting as an international student 10 years ago. Um, I was able to get recognized because uh, the award ceremony is during the EO Sydney in on 29th. So yeah, that's when I'll be able to collect the award. Uh, but yeah, I just feel so much grateful and blessed that um, yeah, I've been recognized as the top 40 entrepreneurs under 40 years of age. Yeah, I just turned 35 in April. Nice. Wow, you're only a baby. <laughs> So congratulations on Thanks. that too, by the way. Now, what's next? What's the future looking Yeah, for like? us, like, you know, uh, the main mission for us to help at least uh, 200 business owners, all right, to understand the power of building a high performance remote team, okay? Because there's so many people who want to grow in their business, but until unless you don't grow your team, uh, it, it's really hard to scale your business, all right? And I'm, I'm a firm believer in the code which says bigger the dream, the more important the team. Okay, and, and sometimes, uh, and, and to be honest with you, that was my biggest limiting belief and struggle. When I first started my business journey, because I started in sales, I used to have so many limiting beliefs that no one can do a better job than me. I'm a sales champion, all right? No one can do in my company as good sales than me, all right? Or I'm, I'm the best in marketing. No one can do as good marketing as me, all right? And uh, It's not really scalable. Yeah, actually, and I, I still see that challenge so much with business owners who hold on to it so much without, uh, like, you know, their ability to delegate. And I, I can relate the most to it because I have been through that uh, biggest struggle for years, all right? It was not a matter of uh, months that I was able to hold on to that. For years, I was able to uh, just hold on to it, but uh, some of the conversations with mentors in EO and everything, uh, the more I let go, the more I focused on empowering people, um, the better freedom I got, and also the more the business was able to grow and scale, and also finding the right people. That's where I think so people get hurt, because uh, even though they may want to grow their business and they believe that they're happy to let go of and give the control, they would have had so much wounds all right, that, oh my God, I tried this last time, it didn't work. I tried it next time, it didn't work. So yeah, just, just trying to share the knowledge with people and share the journey that, you know what, uh, it, it's all, you might have failed many times, but I think so it's going to be a work in progress until unless we don't hone that skill, it's always going to be hard. And I think so one of my mentors had clearly mentioned long, long time back before I started business as well. Um, he talked about like, you know, like if you want to really succeed in business, there's only three skills that you got to hone, you got to get exceptional at. The first one would be sales, all right, because nothing happens until you get better at sales, right? Once you start getting better at sales, you start generating business and that's when the cash flow happens. But for you to scale, you need to get better at marketing, all right? You might have the world's best product, but if people don't know about it, what's the point in having those products? 
So that was another uh, skill that I had to personally learn a lot because it was so much more different than uh, sales. And to be honest with you, we were not able to scale the business as well until we got better at marketing, understanding the pains of the customers, understanding their frustration, what results, outcome, transformation that they wanted, and also crafting a messaging, crafting an offer. Uh, this was another crazy, crazy journey to go through. But the biggest thing what I was able to learn from my mentor was uh, sales and marketing can make you money. But if you want true freedom, you got to be exceptional at leadership and building a team. Until unless you won't master it, you might make a million dollars, but you'll be working 80 hours a week. Um, what's the point yeah. in it? So yeah, so usually even uh, now that's a work in progress for me. That there's so many areas where I need to hone my leadership skills. I need to get better at it. And uh, so that's why I, I can relate to so many business owners. Like, you know, as we are told sometimes, even when I speak with many business owners, we try to run a business as a job. We still have a middle class mindset. And uh, just, just last week, I was having a chat with a business owner. And he's like, you know what? I want to hire a staff. I want to hire a team member. But what if I, it doesn't work? What if I lose the money? And I'm like, you're going to learn some things, all right? <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a part of the process. You always, you, there's no 100% guarantee that this staff is going to work for you. But the challenge is for a long time during our school days, during our childhood days, we are programmed. Uh, failing is bad. Losing money is bad. But nothing much happens until you fail, until you learn from it. Oh, that's where you learn. Yeah, the failures are where we the, where we learn the most. Um, you know, learning is, uh, so, you know, winning is fun and doing things well, but it's actually not where where we learn the lessons that we need to. And, and leadership is a lifelong journey. Um, and, you know, it's it's not one of those things where you go and do the course and put the certificate on the wall and say, I'm now a leader. Um, and even as we're seeing now the different generations and, you know, what they're bringing to the table and their, their expectations. And, you know, so, um, you know, sometimes I think, you know, in the, the years that we had our business, you know, we thought we'd seen everything and then something will happen and go, oh, mm. I haven't seen that before. Okay, something new to learn. So, so let's finish up, Dashan, with... Three tips for you to share with our uh, Big time. listeners. Uh, for me, the biggest thing that, that stands out was uh, when I attended uh, the Wealth Mastery Seminar by Tony Robbins, all right? And I was so keen to attend this because I wanted to grow my wealth. I wanted to have an amazing investment portfolio, everything. And I was just pumped up uh, so that they can start their seminar. And the very first slide uh, that they put in, they put in a pyramid, all right, as to what is most important in your life. And at the bottom, as a foundation of the Wealth Mastery Seminar was health. And I'm like sitting there, I thought, I'm in a Wealth Mastery Seminar. Why are you talking to me about health, nutrition, okay, and supplements, exercising, mental health, everything. And when uh, Tony started talking, he said everything, like, you know, your wealth, your relationships, all right, your peace of mind, everything depends on, on your foundation of your health, your body. That's the only vehicle that you get to use. And that's when I had like a really epiphany and a light bulb moment. Wow, this is something which I really, if I focus on, if I get better at, it can have a ripple effect on all other areas of my life. So I, I think so just, just focusing on health, energy, all right. How can you make sure you're always tied to be in a state of amazing energy? Because um, uh, I had one of the one of the books which I read, uh, Entrepreneur Roller Coaster, where he talked a lot about what CEO stands for. Because we always think CEO stands for a chief execution officer, right? Or chief executive officer. But he says, as a CEO, you are the chief energy officer. Okay. Because until unless you don't bring in that energy, people rarely tend to connect with you. All right. And if you are always dull, if you're always less energy, people tend to go off the cliff and there's not much happens and energy equals execution. Oh, absolutely. They set yeah, the energy, exactly. don't they? So yeah. I think so that that's one thing which I have tried to work on as much as possible. That's where two years ago I got a lot into biohacking as well, because, yeah, just going through the traditional method of uh, like, you know, doctors and other things used to never work. So I had to choose my own path, get started with ice baths like you know uh, cryotherapy many many other things like juice fasting water fasting all those aspects had an amazing impact on my um life and i, I just feel good like you know um when we are sick we don't feel good we had the uh, the eo melbourne um chapter retreat here in bali where i live um 
in May and that's one of the things that we did was um, and I think there was 120 people in basically an ice bath swimming pool um, which was very impressive um, that they could actually create an ice bath in Bali but uh, but to see that many people uh, participating Amazing. was pretty cool that's everything, yeah. uh, and the second uh, important thing uh, for me which has played a big role is uh, one of the books called as who not the how by Dan Sullivan uh, from um, strategic mm-hmm. coach uh, and I think so I've read this book at least three times because uh, I could clearly see that every time I used to have a goal or a project to do I used to always think how do I do it how do I do it I, do, I used to make a list of all the tasks and everything uh, but Dan does go deeper into it. it it's not always the how because that's how small business owners um, that's how usually self-employed people think about it but if you want to really achieve bigger goals it's the who because that particular who can help you hit those goals, hit those dreams faster and also make it sustainable for a longer time. And, and to be honest with you, we have built our entire business uh, around that concept, uh, who not the how, because the more better you get at finding that uh, who and trying to delegate them, empower them and uh, really motivate them to achieve your goals, I think so you will have uh, amazing, amazing sets of leverage that's going to be happening. Because I think so leverage plays the biggest role in business than anything else. Yeah, I read that one a while ago. I might put it back on my list to uh, to read it again. So thank you for that one. Uh, and number, number three, three is again, uh, just to focus on long-term thinking. Okay, uh, because again, it, it serves as a massive reminder for me. All right, it, it always takes more time than what we think. Because when I started my business, I thought, okay, you know what, in next year or two years, I'll be a multimillionaire, I'll be driving Lambos and uh, like, you know, Ferraris everywhere. (laughs) How's that going for you? You know, it's still going to be a long um, (laughs) journey. Okay. And and, and more importantly, thinking in long term, in in most of the decisions that we make, all right, even when a, a team member has some challenges, all right, just, just putting ourselves in their shoes, having that empathy, connecting with them, you know what? Uh, people are always doing the best that they can with what they have and just trying to understand and putting ourselves in their shoes and trying to think long term. All right. Well, is, it, is this my decision going to affect long term things? I think so that, that those three things have had a really big impact just to reiterate, focusing a bit more on the health and energy as a business owner and focusing on who, not the how as much as possible and also thinking uh, really on long term prospects. Like, you know, our decisions, trying to make as many decisions as possible in the long term. Long term. And it's so true. They say that, you know, you uh, people uh, way under overestimate what they can do in one year, but underestimate what they can do in 10. Um, and it's interesting what you said about, um, you know, investing in people. We, my husband, Nick, and I always used to say that, you know, if, if we had an employee who was, you know, we had issues with we didn't believe there were very many people in the world who came to work deliberately wanting to, you know, mess things up or, you know, make our day a really bad day. There, there are very few of those. Most people actually want to do the right thing. And if they were not doing the right thing, we always look back at ourselves and say, well, you know, what have we missed here? How can, you know, what have we not taught them? What don't they understand? Um, because most people are inherently good and they actually want to and and having that long-term investment is actually you know uh, that's been a real learning for me Amazing. so thank you thanks for having me here jenny and thank okay. you oh no thank you for your time i really appreciate it and enjoyed getting to know you um and hopefully we will catch up at an eo event at some time in the future and actually get to absolutely meet you i'm looking to forward to it as well it's so good speaking with you great thank thanks you. dustin